Hello, Rosa. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. Now, let me just see a message from Rosa, from Patricia. Hola, teacher. Bueno, ya me voy a conectar ahorita. Disculpe. Hi, Rosa. We're going to start with the class today. Right. Thank you so much for being here. going to start in one moment. Okay, uh, Rosa, we have Patricia that is coming to the class right now, <laughs> right? She's going to join us. Right, uh, Patricia is going to join us and we are going to work here today, right? We're gonna keep on working with past perfect so we can make our examples and then we're going to move to the next section, okay? So let's start here <laughs> now. I'm gonna show, hi Mayra, welcome to the class. Hi, good evening. Good evening, how are you today? Well, very good, I think. Excellent, glad to hear that. How are you? Very good, doing better, a little bit better than yesterday. <laughs> that sounds good. Yes. I have like, I think it's the flu or something, but I have fever, so. That's why I didn't come to classes yesterday. I'm so sorry. I think it's because of the change of the, of the weather, I think. Okay, so we're gonna start right here. I would like to show you right now the past perfect structure, right? The basic past perfect structure. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, no? Can you see the computer? Pueden ver la compu? Can you see the computer? Yes. Yes, thank you, Rosa. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So here in the computer, we have the structure one more time. Hello, Cody. Hello, Patricia. Thank you for coming to the class. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello, teacher. Hello. Now, we have here the past perfect structure. Right, we're going to see a little bit more about this today. And we can see pretty much that we're going to use the past perfect with have, right? This is mandatory that we use have when we're making our past sentence examples, right? So we're gonna use have plus the past participle of the verse, right? So we need to remember about past participles, right? And we can see something here. What happens here with the past? This tense, right, describes events that happen in the middle of another event in the past, right? Which means that you did it here, right? Everything, like I said before, everything happens in the past and we're gonna stay like that, right? And we can also use, we need to remember that we, we can also use these words, right? These words that help us to give more context, right? Like just, already, still, ever, or never, right? To our sentences, right? And this is going to be our structure. In the videos, in the next two videos, we're going to see the negative sentences, 
and the questions, right? The question forms. Here we can see like the structures that we're going to be using. Right? I'm gonna be sending this uh, picture to WhatsApp immediately, right? So we can have it there. So we can confirm the information that we will uh, that we will see in the video, right? Now I would like to show you here something else. I want to show you more examples, right? This example is very small. Okay. Can you see my computer again? Yes. Yes, okay. In the other one, we saw like the structure, right, that we need to follow. These are just examples with the same verb, just for you to see how it should work, right? We're gonna have the subject, plus had, plus the past participle verb. In the negative, we're going to use a, the subject plus had not, but it's more like most common to use hadn't plus the past participle, right? Unless it's the written form, right? In the written form, and if it's formal, we're going to use had not, right? And for our questions, the auxiliary that we're going to use is had. Right, have plus the subject, plus the past participle, plus any complement, and our question mark at the end, right? And we have three examples right here. Uh, can you read the first example here, Miss uh, Rosa? I went there. I went there after I have completed the task. Very good. So we can see that first I did this activity, right? After I had completed the task. Now we have that. Uh, Patricia, can you please read the next one? Okay. She had come late to the school. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you. Elizabeth, can you, oh, sorry. Uh, Cory, can you please read my father? My father and mother had been married for two years when I was born. Okay, have been married. Remember in this case, the verb is have been, right? Married is just an adjective, right? This is not a, a verb, right? And let's read the next one, Adriana, until. Until he went to England, he had never spoken English. Okay, thank you so much. And the next one is for Elizabeth. Sorry, Elizabeth. <laughs> My mind is, is a little bit crazy right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Read the last example. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. If you had studied hard last year, he will have passed and passed pass all his exams. All his exams. The last example is a conditional, like the one that Adrian uh, tried to write last time. Do you remember that Adrian tried to write a, a conditional example? So it's similar, right? The only thing is that he just wrote this part. He means the main clause, right? He just wrote this, uh, the conditional form, not the complete sentence. But here we are, right? We have examples for the past, uh, past perfect, right? Things that we need to remember. We always use had as an auxiliary, no matter what the subject is, right? Another thing is that we are going to use past participle verbs, not simple past, right? That is a common mistake that we make, that we use a verse in past and not past participle. So we need to remember that. And that the auxiliary that we use for questions is had. Right, that's what we do. Now, let's try, last, last class, we try to make examples, right? Let's try to make one example for each, right? For each of the sentences. I'm gonna write mine too here in the chat while you write yours, right? 
Okay, I have my example in affirmative. My father had already gone to the supermarket when we arrived home, right? That's my first one. So he went there and then we arrived home, right? So it was a, that was a previous activity. I'm gonna make another one in negative. Okay, I hadn't completed my report before my boss asked me for a new assignment. So I was, I already had two assignments now, right? Because I didn't finish the first one. Let's see, I have two here. We had started the class. Okay, perfect. That's a good beginning, Elizabeth. We have started the class, but we need something else, right? We have started the class. Um, Mm, when the principal visit the classroom, for example, right? Or when something happened, because we kind of need two activities, right, to happen. Let's see, Patricia, my friend had been a cashier in the bank. Okay, very good. But the word last year, right, takes everything away. Because last year is, is, is actually strictly for simple past. Right, my friend had been a cashier in the bank before, I don't know, before she, she was promoted to be a manager, right? Mm -hmm. So we okay. have, uh -huh. so we say, oh, first she was a cashier and then she was promoted, right? I have one more from Cody. I had forgotten to sleep early last week when I had an exam. Mm, I have forgotten to sleep early. Because I had an exam last week. Because I had an exam last week. Because I had an exam last week. So the last week, we'll go to the simple past sentence. Okay, Courtney? Okay, teachers. Okay, let's see your example, Mayra. Rosa, hi, Adrian. Welcome to the class. Thank you, teacher. Adriana? Your example, Rosa Luz. Okay, let's see. More examples, no more. My sister has seen the all in the tree before. Okay, before it flew. I don't know if. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Before it flew. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. No, it's it's instead uh, the flight. Okay. Uh, I got insomnia yesterday because I had had problems in my job. Excellent, Cody. I got insomnia yesterday. Insomnia yesterday. Let me put it here. Insomnia. 
this is for me is a difficult word to write because I always forget to like this. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, how do we feel about the past perfect? Do you have questions about this, this structure? I had checked my mail until I hadn't. I hadn't checked my mail until today. Mm -hmm. I hadn't. Don't worry. <laughs> it's fine. Don't say sorry. You know, we always make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The train had just left when I arrived at the station. Very good, Adrian. Like when we say, Ish, me dejo el bus, right? It's the same. <laughs> the train had just left when I arrived at the station. Very well. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna go ahead and check here the videos, right? We're gonna take just some time to watch the videos, but I would like to start working on section five. Right, we're, we're gonna have more examples. Tell me, well, let's do something. Let's watch the videos. And then if we have more questions, right, we are going to ask right, about the past perfect. Let me see, Rosa Luz. I went to the supermarket. Mm, I have completed the vice. Mm, let me see. But mm -hmm. I went to the super I went to the supermarket because I had not I had not completed my shopping my shopping okay. mm -hmm. because I had not completed my shopping. That's why you went to the supermarket, right? Because you hadn't completed your shopping. You have to see the past perfect as something that happened first, right? And after that, something else happened, right? So I was sick. I was sick because I had eaten a lot, right? So what was the, the first activity? I ate too much, right? That's why I got sick. I got a stomachache. Now, let me go ahead and show you my computer right now with the videos, right? And we're going to start here. We're gonna see past perfect positive and negative statements. We saw the overview yesterday, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday. My goodness, you will think I'm irresponsible because I don't come to classes. I'm so sorry. Let's see. I'm gonna share with you. Tell me if you can listen. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So can you listen? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So let's yes, get started. Yes. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. So we use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, 
we're going to have a subject and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary that happens to be hat as you can see there color in red and then after that we uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb so we're going to include the past participle of the verb and then finally we will have a complement to that sentence in the example we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event and that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly so as you can see we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that but I, I mentioned that um, we these sentences can be separate or they can be together so let's look at the examples at this time um, I mentioned that we're gonna have some sort of subject so we're gonna say someone all right and I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the auxiliary verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat, and then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right, and the past participle of that verb it's stolen. Okay, so someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, try to see if I can if I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, uh, I should color this maybe blue. Uh, same thing as it's in red. The auxiliary verb is in red, and then the past participle is. Uh, the bird that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had, and then the past participle of the bird in this case is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence uh, that we want to emphasize. So let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I, excluder, have, the past participle of the verb forget, it's forgotten. And then the complement becomes to lock the locker. Now, quickly, what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect. Let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right, so I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use hadn't. All right, so let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here, just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb, uh, and in this case, because it's a negative, we, we're going to say hadn't. Um, then we use the past participle of that verb. Uh, so in this case, um, it's lock. Uh, the past participle of that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at, at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice these concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure and practice making negative statements. You can follow this structure.
Okay, if you see, right, the structures that he's showing us there, it's pretty much what we saw, right? The positive and negative. The part that I like the most is this part. So that you can see clearly. Right here, right here, we can see that we have two parts right there in the sentence, right? Why do we have two parts? Because we use the past perfect for something that happened before another thing, right? So right here, what are we saying? That in the past event, right, that we have, right, in the past event, my goodness, right? This is the past event. Then we need a connector or we need a comma or we need something that tells us that there is another event that happened before, right? Before that past event. It didn't happen uh, after, right? It always, the past perfect happened before, right? So first I have put my stuff in my locker, right? And then I work out, right? I had, someone had stolen my wallet and then I came back and like, where is my wallet? Where is my wallet? Right, so those are the scenarios that we need to remember at the time that we uh, look at the, uh, the past perfect, right? Let's see here, we have a message. They have rented the house because the frame came from the US. Very good, that's right. You have two events, right? Very good. Because the friend came from the US, excellent. Then we have two things, right? Very good. So do we understand how to make positive and negative statements? Does anybody have a question about this, please? Ask questions if you need to. Teacher, about the connectors that we should to use, uh, it's just because in, you said comma in one, yeah, sometimes we just need to use a comma. For example, in the first one, we only had the conjunction end, right? The conjunction end. So yeah. we can use here, if you look at this ones right here, Miss Cody, we have here N, right? Which is only a connector. But then we have when, right? Which is a coordinating conjunction as well as because. Right, the connectors are those that we say, do you remember when we practice, when we, no, I didn't teach you before, <laughs> but <laughs> when you're writing, you need to know, you need to remember the fanboys, right? Did the teachers explain you the fanboys before? The fanboys are connectors, right? The fanboys, right, are this. Right, these are four, right, and nor, but, or, jet, and so. Now, for this purpose, for the purpose of these sentences that we're using right now, we might be able to use only for an N, probably so, but not so much, right, from these ones. Then from the coordinating conjunctions, we can use those that tells us a chronological event, right? That would, it could be before, because, when, right? Uh, after that, right? Those that would tell us, ah, okay, Something happened later, right? Later can be another one. These are yes, the it's just because when I when we use when, it seems like it it happened in the in the in the moment that two events are happening in the in the same moment. I don't know. Not all. Uh -huh. Not always. Not always. When is is not always at the same time. 
when you you can use when and you, if you want that to sound at the same time you most use simple past simple past yes uh-huh but if you use when but if you you can use when with simple past and past progressive you can use when with simple past and past perfect right and then it's not the same right simple past past perfect right simple past past progressive and then simple past simple past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good question Corey. that's perfect right that's those are very nice questions right now example the, the example that you wrote over there patricia was very good thank you so much let me show you here. I want to show you. Give me one moment. Give me a second. I think I'm an, I might be able to find you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the ones that we're gonna use the most, pretty much. When, because, for, before, right? In, we can use in as well. And the, the commas, right? Or semicolons. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna use, Miss, Miss Corey. Now, I would like to know, Right, if someone else, these ones are the most useful, the ones that are right here, right? These ones. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you know what they all mean, uh, Cody? Yes? Uh, yes. Yes? Okay. Yes, I know. Okay, thank you. My sister's boyfriend had worn a tie when he was invited to the party. Okay, very good. Excellent. But actually I will say it differently, Patricia, because what was the first event? Was he invited? The first, uh, uh, he invited, uh-huh. Uh-huh, my sister- At the party. Uh-huh, I will say, my sister boyfriend weren't a tie when he had when he was he had been invited to the party had uh -huh. invited. Mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah, I, I understand okay thank you patricia okay let's watch the next one and let's keep on making ourselves questions remember this is this is good for everyone right when we're making this type of examples we all remember a little bit of something right and we keep on practicing right let's start by the end of this class, you'll learn how to form questions using the past perfect tense. So let's get started. I would like to start off by presenting the formula, if you will, in order to form past perfect questions. So let me include the formula now to this document, and then I'm going to write a couple of questions, and then we're going to try to make sense of those two questions there. So let me start off by having a yes or no question. And then we're going to try to make sense of this particular question, of course, following this formula that we see here. So first of all, um, if we have a yes and no question, I will start by using hath. That's the auxiliary verb. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and color that real fast just to make sure that we are understanding this particular topic. I think I'm using green color there. Yeah. And then uh, this follows the subject. In this case, this happens to be you. So let me put a little blue color there, uh, then uh, we will use the past participle of the verb that we're using, 
So in this case, it's the birth study. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we have a complement. So that uh, in black, you see that that's the complement of this particular question. So the question is, had you studied English before taking this class? Right. Um, and um, that's how we form a yes or no question. Now let me write a WH question. Uh, and WH questions, well, uh, what that means is that we're going to include a WH word. And we do that whenever we want more information about a particular topic. Uh, this, the way to do it is almost the same thing with the only difference that we will include a WH word. As you can see there, we have a WH word there. Uh, and then had continues to, we use the auxiliary had, uh, we include the subject. Uh, in this case, we include the past participle of the verb and then whatever complement that exists. So the question is, where had you studied English before taking this class? So maybe the answer to the previous question was yes. And then we went and uh, we asked a second question. Where had you studied English before taking this class? So what I would like for you to do now is to practice making lots of questions in order to make sure that you're understanding this particular topic. Okay, so far we have not made questions, right? We have just made a compliment. So a, that uh, in black sentences, right? So now it's time for us to make our questions, right? We know that with the questions we start with had, right, which is the auxiliary, but we also have the option to start with a WH word, right, as we can see there, uh, right, plus the rest of the, the, the structure that we have, right? So let's start making our questions, right? He says, he had you studied English before taking this class? Right. That was a good question. Let's see here in the chat we have. Had you read about my country before you came to visit us? To visit it? Yeah, to visit it without the ED. Very good, Patricia. You're on fire. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Very good. That's what we're talking about. That's a question. Excellent. Right. So what could be another one? That was all you needed to do, very good. Okay, let's see another example. Adrian, Cory, Adriana, Rosa, Mayra, Elizabeth. Uh -huh. Ah, teacher. Let me. No, give me a moment. Okay. I wrote and I forgot to send and <laughs> and I lost. <laughs> what had you told them before I got there? Yes, before I got there. And the question mark at the end, of course. Right. Good job, Patricia. You're on fire. Huh? <laughs> I got that. Yes, that's right. Where have where had the kids hidden the keys? Where had where had the kids hidden the keys? Yes, Adrian. Where had when had you gone? When had you gone to the honeymoon after you got married? It is okay. 
or not? Mm, when had you gone to the marriage, to the honeymoon? After you got married. But then, then the, the first event will be getting married and going to the honeymoon will be a second event. Okay. Uh -huh. I can fix that sentence. <laughs> yeah, try to do it. Very good. Elizabeth, Rosa, Adriana, what had you planned to do after the pandemic? Plan. Very good. Excellent. Plan. Where had Carmen bought these glasses? Good. Teacher, I have a dude. Yes, Mayra. And the question, the verb is in the past participle. Yes. Form. Ah, okay. All the thank time. You. Uh, okay, thank you. Where had you been? Mm -hmm. I would say, I'm thinking here, with your sentence, Mayra, and your sentence, Cody, we will need to use before. What had you planned to do before the pandemic? Because it's something that happened. We had the pandemic and then we had a, remember, the past perfect has to be a previous event. Uh, mm -hmm. The word same will be here. Where had you been before the party? So you went to the party, but before that, what did you do? Where had you been? It's before because mm -hmm. the, pa the past perfect is the, the first event. Right. Exactly. Now I'm gonna show you here a exercise. I'm gonna show you two exercises. Right. With the past perfect. Can you see my computer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So we have there exercises with the past perfect and the past simple, right? Now, the first one is pretty easy because it tells us to put the verbs in the past perfect tense. Easy. So let's go ahead and do that. What would you put in the first one? We have seven sentences and we have one to seven people here, which is good. We start with number one is going to be Elizabeth. Ellie, number two, Patricia. Number three, Cory. Number four, Mayra. Five, Adrian. Six, Adriana. <clears throat> Seven, uh, where is Rosa? She left. Seven, Rosa, if she combats, right? So let's start. Let's try to write the answers. If you are ready before, just tell me and we can write this sentence here. It doesn't matter your number, you can tell me your answer. They had A before he married. Okay, have eight, like this, have eight. Um, what have you, uh, pardon. it's okay. Elizabeth, I need you to find out the past participle of it because eight is the simple past. Okay. Now, uh, tell me Patricia mm -hmm. number two. Uh, have you finished the report before he asked for it? 
Okay, have you finished the report before he asks for it? Very good, thank you. Now let's go yeah, with the next one, Cody, number three. Uh, I think I am the number four. Let me see. No, you're Can not. Jennifer, Jennifer had, had both the house before the market crashed. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Mayra, number four. Yeah. What did she do that upset him so much? That would be perfect in simple past. What did, he, what did she do? But we're talking about past perfect. What had she what, done? What had she done? Exactly. That upset him so much. Yes. Right. Number five, Adrian. Okay. Our boss uh, had not made uh, the decision yet when management uh, changes their mind. Very good. Change their mind. Change. Change. Change their mind. And Change number six. Adriana. The student, the student had written the report, but the teacher made them do it again. Very good. Number seven, Patricia. Uh, Mark had wanted uh, to go to New York but his wife changed his mind. Very good, thank you so much. And the first one, what is the, thank you. What is the past participle, Elizabeth, for it? You don't remember? Okay, the past participle is eaten. Yes. Um, eaten. Eaten. Had eaten. Now we're going to check here, right? Of course, we're going to have bad score, but we're going to check those answers right now. Right? And we got it right. Very good. Everything is in perfect score. Excellent. Now we're going to do exercise number two. Okay. In exercise number two. I need you to pay attention, right? My goodness, I hate when this happens. Let me stop sharing. Give me a moment. One second, you guys. <clears throat> okay, there we are. I'm going to show you again my computer. Sorry for the lateness. Bam, bam, bam. Can you see the computer right now? Yes. yes. Okay. So in this one, it's a little bit tricky because you need to choose which is the best option. Should you choose the past tense or the past perfect? You have six sentences, right? 
We have six people here, right? So I'm gonna give you one sentence each. So be ready. Number one is for Cody. Number two is for Adriana. Number three is for Patricia, right? Number four is Adrian. Number five is Mayra. And number six is Elizabeth, right? Excuse me, teacher. Yep. But the number three, isn't it? Isn't here. One, two. <laughs> yes. So you're gonna do number four too. <laughs> Exactly, with one, two, four, five, six, yeah. Sometimes I forget the numbers. I think that's an issue. <laughs> I think that's a problem with my mind. I forget some numbers, so I'm sorry. <laughs> do, number, do number four or do them all. Okay. You, you, you know what to do there. Oh, you know what? The four is mine. Yeah, you know what? Do number one for this other one. For letter C, this one. That is for me. Yes. For letter C, uh, do number one. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. You need to choose, like, it's the same exercise to choose which is the best option, right? Okay, are you ready, Cory? I think, yes. The robbers left the bank when the policeman finally had arrived. Okay, number two. When the rains started, the Atkinson has finished planting trees. Okay, Adriana, number four. Darcy uh, has seen Miss the Castle before she came again last Sunday. Okay, very well. Number five. Mr. Palmer hadn't spoken any Chinese before he moved to Peking. Okay, excellent. Number six. Mm, Sunny got fighting be the time the ambulance had reached the hospital. Okay, and Patricia, number one. <clears throat> I have fallen my teacher that my mom helped me with my homework. Mm -hmm. Help me with my homework, like this? Uh, no. Uh, have not tolling. Tolling. Tolling is the past perfect of, of the past participle of tell? Uh, 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 no, no, no. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It is tall. Tall. It is tall. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna check here. Remember, it's just a matter of identifying the events, right? And we have this, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at the first one. It says the rovers had left the bank when the policemen finally arrived, right? So they left and then the police came. So since they left, um, that is the past the perfect event. event. Yes. The rovers had left the bank when the policemen finally arrived, right? Then okay. the last one with Sonny, right? Sonny had got fainting and then the ambulance came, right? So that was even in this one, but I didn't, I didn't tell my teacher that my mom had helped me, right? I didn't tell my teacher that my mom had helped me with my homework, right? Because my mom helped me at home, 
right? And then I presented the homework to the teacher, right? So there we are. That's what we have there. Do you understand these examples? Tell me, please. If you have questions, they are more than welcome. Teacher, I have a question. Yes, Adrian. In the case, is the negative a question is have not is the contraction hadn't. Yes. This is the perfect pronunciation. Hadn't. hadn't. Yes. Hadn't. Ah, okay. That's correct, okay. Adrian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other question? Feel free to ask, please. Patricia? Hmm. No question. <laughs> Adriana? Mayra? Cori? Elizabeth? No question. No question. Any question? You don't have any questions. Okay, so we're going to keep working. Uh, oh, teacher. Yes? Uh, sorry. In the, the first one, um, I think I, I got confused, but the, the, the word finally, uh, it, oh, ah, I don't know how to say, but it's the clave, pues. <laughs> I it's think. The clue. Ah, okay. <laughs> the keyword. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's like my comment. <laughs> <laughs> when you have to think about the past perfect, think about chronological events. Right. That's something you need to remember. Right. Chronological events. Right. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So. Uh, I think tomorrow it's Father's Day and Inglés Corporativo doesn't work, but I'm not pretty sure if they will want to cover the class that we missed yesterday or if that class is going to be recovered until next, uh, next Friday, okay? So I think we will let you know by tomorrow, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, Thank guys. You. It's been a, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and thank you for connecting to the class. I appreciate it very much. Have a beautiful rest of the night and happy Father's Day to your family members. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. See you on the Monday. See you Monday.